What's our what crypto muscle fake lasers pump and iron pump crypto this is where it's at platforms glory so much more and uh you got crypto muscle network the crypto muscle legacy channel and this is the crypto news this is gonna be a double wide edition because uh, as as you saw the headline I'm gonna be talking about the headline plus catch everything up in news and crypto and we'll go on from there, right? And I'll, I'll explain why I'm choosing to talk about that subject matter uh, as we go on through the news here. So without further ado, subscribe to everything I got going on here. All right. You know, don't hate the player, hate the game. This is where it's all at. And uh, I'm, all, I'm always all about being all in and, uh, you know, saying it like it is. Because I am the crypto outlaw and I do what I say and I say what I do. And let's just get to it. So here we go. All right, crypto news. Let's talk about what's going on in the coin market cap. It's been a while since we talked about what's going on in the coin market cap. Still over 1.1 trillion. Bitcoin's hanging in there around the 27, 28. Kind of going sideways here. And as the market just kind of follows. So that's where we're at right now. I won't go too far into this part of it. And uh, let's see here. Let's talk about some of the things here in the crypto news here. South Korean authorities seize $160 million in assets tied to Terra employees. Well, of course. <laughs> if you got the most wanted guy with the Terra Luna, you know, exchange. Well, yeah, they're going to go after everything to get any sort of value or money back. Uh, rumor about Interpol, Red, Notice... For Binance founder and CEO CZ, Binance modestly roiled crypto markets late Monday. Okay, whatever. Uh, President Trump says our currency is crashing and should no longer be the world standard. All right. Uh, let's see. Binance Australia's derivatives license canceled following a request by exchange. So the exchange will close all of its customers open derivatives positions by April 21st. So that's another two weeks away there. A little less than two weeks away. Uh, decentralized cryptocurrency markets threaten U.S. national security. Breaking news from around the world. Well, I mean, of course, because the only reason why it threatens it because they have no control. <laughs> that's what it is. So anything decentralized, well, it's open for anybody, you know, and when there's no government authority or government it being able to take it, yeah, they, they, it's a threat. So that's what it is. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. There's, there's always going to be centralized and decentralized, you know, and there's pros and cons about both. You choose what you want to be, right? Crypto market maker Wintermute bears eerie resemblance to Alameda. Um, okay, well, if that's the case, then maybe there might be more fallouts like Alameda and FTX and all that, so I guess that remains to be seen. Uh, Reddit's Gen 3 NFTs bring cutting edge, okay, to Polygon. OpenSea user mistakenly bids 100 ETH for free NFT. Wow. I wonder if that went through. <laughs> See, the trader may have intended to bid a hundred, but actually placed a bit of a hundred ETH instead. Oh, I see. Yeah. Some have suggested that the sale was a result of wash trading. OpenSea Pro. Well, if the dude a hundred had a hundred ETH in his wallet, then that's kind of on him. But if, I mean, shit. Either way. Hopefully you didn't have 100 ETH in that wallet, but it sounded like he did. Uh, open Since OpenSea's acquisition of NFT Aggregator Gym, the platform has been refined to create OpenSea Pro. Uh, but it doesn't say what happened, the outcome of that person there. So, yeah, that's pretty stupid news. 25% uh, of NFT owners have a collection of 51 or more. I, I just don't see I just don't see it I, I don't know 
Like I, I kind of looked into it, and I just can't. I just can't pull the trigger on putting my ETH towards an NFT. If you want to give it to me for free, cool, I'll take it. But man, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know if I could buy NFTs. That's just me, though. Uh, Solana to launch state compression store. 100 million NFTs for only 11.93. Okay, I don't even trust Solana for nothing. I don't care. I don't trust anything about them. They've had so many issues, uh, and it's just there's been so countless amount of issues with them that I'm surprised. Let's see how much Solana is. Well, they've only lost maybe like 10 to 15 dollars off their price from last year. I think it was around above 30 some bucks last year. And uh, I don't know. I, I just don't trust them. I wouldn't trust them for shit. You know, so that's just me, though. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I'm just going to be catching up. A lot of crypto here. Crypto news here. Some of it might be redundant. I'm just trying to catch up. FDIC tells signature crypto clients accounts closed by April 5th. That's already coming past. Um... USDT market dominance reaches highest level since June 2021 because of what happened to USDC. So it's bound to happen like that. And I guess over time, as things settle out and people trust USDC again, there'll probably be something that'll shift back to USDC. Uh, Montenegro's justice minister says South Korea, United States sought extradition of Do Kwan. Okay, SEC brings charges against Beeksy for not registering as Securities Exchange. And that's SEC. They are going after everybody right now that is not considered, um, that's not registered. They're just going to go after you as a Securities Exchange and try, try to charge you. So that's just what it is right now. They're embracing crypto by charging making charges against you <laughs> that's how they're embracing it so, yeah go ahead do your shit and we'll take the shit too we'll just take it from you crypto exchange Gemini uh, looking to launch overseas derivatives operation okay right when Australia is going to close their derivatives operation <laughs> for Binance that is but still it's like I don't know that's an area I wouldn't touch. How about that? Uh, Binance Bitcoin trading volume hits lowest level in eight months following termination of zero fee trading. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you have zero fee trading and then all of a sudden you say, okay, we're going to start charging fees now. What do you expect? You know, like the same people to just, you know, stay, stay in? No, you're going to lose some people, you know. It's expected. Uh, crypto hardware wallet maker Ledger raises most of 109 million round. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, U.S. government sold 9,800 Bitcoin on 9,800 Bitcoins on March 14th. Plans to sell a further 41,500 Bitcoins connected to Silk Road in four batches over the course of the year. Wow. Can't wait for that. Yeah, I can't wait. Man, that's a lot of Bitcoin. So when you think about it, that's 50,000 Bitcoin this year released from the U.S. government put on the market. So interesting, huh? Crypto exchange Bitrix to wind down U.S. operations next month. Wow. Yeah, because, you know, they don't want to mess with the SEC and... They don't. I, they just don't. They rather just pull out than to deal with it, right? And I, hey, I don't blame them. You know, um, it's just too much going on with the SEC going after everything and everybody and their mama. And so some people don't want to deal with it and just say, "I'm out." Uh, Justice Sun is said to have discussed stake sale in Huby Global. Well, do your shit then, right? Uh, crypto custodian Copper to uh, provide off exchange settlement to OKX customers. All right. Uh, Binance denies CZ faces Interpol red notice. 
So he denies it now. Uh, packs full of P2P exchange, peer to peer, that means, to shut down its operations. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> uh, tokenized gold crypto assets at 1 billion market cap. MicroStrategy has acquired an additional 1,045 Bitcoin for 29.3 million at an average price of 28,000. Man, it could have bought it cheaper than that months ago. But I don't know. I, I still don't think we're out of this bear market. I still think the price will go down. Uh, Binance rejected Justin Sun's offer to buy his Hubie stake. All right. Ooh, what's this? ASIC, Binance Australia Derivatives uh, AFS license canceled. Wow, ASIC's actually doing something? <laughs> Usually they're uh, an organization or a government body that doesn't do shit in Australia. They just let things go, you know, and now all of a sudden they're doing something. Kind of funny. Mount Gox repayment window has opened, but repayments will take some time. Well, they don't take too much time. This is the time to do it. You know, shit. All right, let's see here. What else? Elizabeth Warren launches anti-crypto re-election campaign. What? Man, these old bags got to just move on. They got to, uh, you know, embrace the future. This is the future. Uh, let's see here. Wow, El Salvador president officially signs bill eliminating all taxes on income property and capital gains for technology innovations. Damn. See, El Salvador is doing their shit, you know, because their Bitcoin is like their, uh, you know, their uh, choice of currency. Um, they're doing their shit, though. And if they've been dca right now, and once Bitcoin turns around and goes back towards those all-time highs, man, El Salvador is going to be I wouldn't say filthy rich, but they're going to be well off. Uh, U.S. Social Security funds are projected to run out by 2033. It's 10 years from now. It's not that long. It's going to get here before you know it. Um, let's see. Tax center set on fire last night in France. New York Times, Times loses its Twitter verified badge. UBS to reportedly fire up to 36,000. Employees after the uh, Credit Suisse takeover. Um, pretty much all the Middle Eastern countries here to cut oil production output until the end of 2023. And now just keep the gas prices where it's at now pretty much or raised higher to kind of limit production in a sense because with less oil consumption means less oil demand which means gas prices will fall well they want to maintain rather than let it fall so that they cut production um, US uh, Warren says here with Bitcoin there's no thing that backs it up it's just belief all right bitch <laughs> uh, well she's not the future right uh, Chinese yuan, yuan replaces U.S. dollar becoming the most traded currency in Russia. Oh well, yeah, it's in Russia, and of course they're going to do that. It's, it's almost like they're trying to show, hey, we don't need U.S. dollar because you know there, there's like this sort of bitterness between the countries right now. So let's see here. U.S. job openings fall to 9.93 million, lower than expected. And China invests 39 billion in Malaysia. Yeah, what are they doing there, huh? Former President Trump's NFT sales have increased by 251% following his arrest. Pretty funny. Uh, Federal Reserve needs to raise interest rates above 5% and hold them there for a while, all right? We talked about micro strategy already. Oh, that's a good one right here. Cash app founder Bob Lee stabbed to death in SF. Yeah, San Francisco has become so dangerous now. You got to be very, very careful out there. And uh, yeah, 
you, nothing's ever safe anymore in SF. SF is not what it used to be. Believe me, all right. I've I used to go out there all the time, and I should. I even went to college out there. Uh, I'm a San Francisco Giants fan, a Niners fan, and so believe me, if anybody loves the city, it's me. All right, and and uh, it's just you know disappointing to see how run down and it, it looks like a trash city now. You know, SF. It's just disappointing. And this right here, it's not like someone sought out to kill him. I bet it was just some random, you know, homeless or people out there just looking to rob people. Came up and said, hey, this guy looks like somebody we could rob. And went up to him, stabbed him, took his money and left, you know, without even thinking of flinching. Uh, oh, shit, this is Bob Lee or whatever, you know. Or this guy's rich or whatever. Um, that's what I truly think about what happened there. So... That's that there. Yeah, there's been a lot of protesting in Paris right now. Um, that's sending a message to the government. So, U.S. Treasury says decentralized crypto markets threaten national security. Iris to hire 30,000 new employees with additional $80 billion in funding to increase tax enforcement. Ooh. All right. And uh, let's see here. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says Federal Reserve Digital Dollar threatens U.S. financial freedom. And look at this. Arkansas passes bill to protect Bitcoin and crypto mining. Okay. That's where you want to go if you want to start mining now. <laughs> uh, Texas Senators propose bill to create a state-issued gold-backed digital currency. And then lastly, Coinbase to integrate Bitcoin Lightning Network, CEO says. So uh, we got all that stuff there. And then all this talk about uh, Bud Light and Nike with Dylan Mulvaney, if you guys haven't known. Uh, this is where they use a trans influencer in their commercials, right? Started on March Madness. And, you know, and when it comes to Budweiser, Bud Light, beer, right? It's money, and and uh, they're the number one, you know, domestic distributor uh, when it comes to beer. All right, and I've worked in the beer business in the past for quite a few years, so I have very good knowledge of the beer business. And you know, it's deeply rooted in history when it comes to these sort of things. Um, and, you know, they're always trying to do things to move the needle, right? To take market share from competitors, things like that. And they've done that for years on years on years on years, right? First with Budweiser. This is Anheuser-Busch company, that is. And then with Bud Light, as the generation changed and became a younger drinking generation, you know, it shifted towards Bud Light. So everything you see nowadays is a lot of Bud Light commercials. Budweiser still remains classically themed, you know, the... The Clydesdales, the wagons, all that stuff, you know, traditional stuff, Bud Light, younger crowd, you know, uh, edgy commercial, things like that. And then now they shifted towards trans influencers, right, which is controversial in itself. Now, being that I was in the beer business for a long time, it struck a chord in me because, you know, it, it was something that, for, for one thing, it's a male-dominated business, all right? And for women to break in, it it was it was hard back then, because if anything, they're looked at more as eye candy in the business, right? But as time went on, they became more accepted and equal as to male counterparts working in this field, right? And with that, all right, came you know, for example, the owner of, of the distributor I worked at in the past is female hot by the way <laughs> hot daughter too <laughs> and uh you know she came up and she's always all about you know uh you know fairness and you know women and you know being on you know the presence of the business and all that and i totally got that she was featured on you know uh when it came to publications and all that stuff or you know rising women in the business things like that which was great so with this though, when you use a trans influencer that someone and that that a lot of people have said, you know, is not really full fully committed trans, it's just more of a trend, right? 
it, it really slaps in the face for the women out there because I love women, right? I love women, and I respect transgenders for whoever, you know, if they choose what they want, whatever you want to be, you can be whatever you want to be. I don't care, right? But it's a slap in the face for women in the business because you're trying to say that of all the women you want for representation of women in the business, it's not even a full-on woman. It's a, it's a, a man, right? It's a, it's a male-born person that, you know, it looks like a woman, I guess. And now all of a sudden, you know, is propped up to be the face of all women out there. And to me, that's a slap in the face. It's solely disrespectful. And uh, I don't know. It, it, to me, it, it just really slaps the face of all the women that represents the business, that represents even the customers that drink this stuff, and then to say, hey, we have this person here who's not even a full woman, it's it's, a, it's really a man, the, to be the face of uh, all this stuff. So, of course, there's a lot of backlash with it, right? Kid Rock blasting up the Bud Light, you know, with his little, uh, you know, rifle, uh, all of the different concert venues deciding to cancel and boycott Anheuser-Busch products, Budweiser, Bud Light products. And I totally get it. And they're also using the same person, Dylan Mulvaney, for Nike products as well, which is controversial in itself because, again, and this is the thing that's a slap in the face of women because you're using a transgender, a person that you know, was a male and still has male parts, to be the face of sports bras and women's sports attire. Now think about that for a second. You're using not even a real woman to be representing the all women of sports bras and sports attire and all that stuff for a global company. I mean, I'm trying to think here, like, how is that really representing that? To me, it, it's disrespectful for the gender of being a woman it's res- disrespectful for being a woman you know like to all women for using someone that's a man or you know you could say was or is a man you know that's not fully a man right uh to or not fully a woman to be representing women's clothing which is just wow you know so when you see this stuff and you think it's a move to try to, uh, you know, reach, you know, I guess different audiences and all that and maybe try to increase market share? No, this is, to me, it's going it's, to it's gonna lose money. Just on the backlash alone, you're going to see that they're going to lose market share to their competitors. And it's a matter of are they going to be able to recover that you know, loss? And they might not see it right away, but they're going to see it as time goes on, as more talk is happening. This has only just been in the last few days that these, you know, commercials have come up with this trans influencer, Dylan Mulvaney, doing Bud Light and Nike and all that stuff. And it's really a slap in the face to, you know, women that were born as a woman to use basically a a woman that was a male and still is a male as a woman to represent and and influence these products to me Nike is going to lose market share and sales and Anheuser Busch the parent company of Budweiser Bud Light is going to lose market share and they're going to lose money and all that stuff too so this was not a good move at all if you're trying to, I don't know, rock the space or try to do something to, uh, I, I guess you could be, you could say arguably like to be like, you know, uh, reaching for all, I guess, sexualities, I guess, and, and genders, I guess, in a sense, but it's just a bad move though, and obviously it's, it's shown, right? Because you can't hide what's going on in the media right now and the backlash that's happening. So, I mean, even look at this now. Uh, is a Bud Light marketing team fired for Dylan Mulvaney fallout? Right? Hey, you know what? If they want to cover their asses, they, they will probably fire that team. I mean, because that was a... 
Someone, all right, think about it, though. Someone, this Dylan Mulvaney, someone that didn't know nothing about March Madness and, you know, barely knows anything about anything at all, and you're using this person to prop up to be a, you know, representative of this global company, spokesperson, wow, I mean, and they commemorate on the cans, too, Wow, I mean, really, when you could have used literally anybody, and I mean, it, it really rocks the core to the, the to the deep rooted people that have drink these beers over the years. Like my dad, personally, you know, was a Budweiser kind of guy, right? When I say was, because he passed away years ago, but the point of it was that he was a Budweiser kind of guy, and I honestly would think if he was to see this, uh, I don't know what he would do, like. Uh, I don't think he would agree with it is what I would think. And looking at now, you know, I know the owner of my former job, you know, my former company. And I, I just can't see her agreeing with this as well. As hard as she's worked to be where she's at, to be the, the owner of this company, this distributor of this global product, this global brand that, sh- that we were distributing when I was worked there, to, to be on uh, a on media and all this stuff and all of a sudden you're going to have someone that is you know someone that's not good enough to be a man but is a fake woman to be the spokesperson to be the the person that represents women in the business I don't know I just don't think my former you know owner of the company that I used to work with would agree to this and I could be wrong but I just don't see it I not knowing her I, I can't I can't see her seeing that so you know to me this is a money losing venture with Anheuser-Busch and Nike and it's really going to show over time that's what we're going to see all right so I just wanted to kind of throw this out there uh as this thing struck a chord because you know it's like my former job and career before you know and and uh I'm just glad I was, I'm out of this because it sucked by the way one, I'm not a beer drinker, and two, uh, I grew a lot of knowledge of the beer business and all that, but I could not see as a lifelong career. That was just my thing about it, and that's why I quit years ago. <laughs> and so uh, all I got to say is now where I'm at, oh, very fulfilling, and uh, I can't wait to see the end of it, you know, because now you know, I got a pension with this job too, so by the way. But, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to throw that out there on this double-wide edition of uh, – the crypto muscle news and uh, i don't want you guys to just let me sh- you know share your thoughts with me about this stuff here let me know what you think about this uh, do you agree with this do you like this partnership that they did uh with uh you know dylan mulvaney i didn't even know who dylan mulvaney was but you know a lot of people said that sh- you know she's not really a fully committed transgender it's more almost like a cross dresser in a sense yeah did some facial surgeries and things like that, but not really like, you know, fully committed, right? Go chop the body part down there and work that out and all that stuff, right? Kind of like Bruce Jenner, you know, what is her name, Caitlyn Jenner. I don't think she ever chopped the penis. I could be wrong, but I don't think she ever chopped the penis off. And so, you know, to me, if you don't go through it that way, then you're not fully committed. Uh, that's just my opinion on it. I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes or because I do respect, you know, if wherever you want to be is what you want to be. But at the same time, when you have deeply rooted tradition and you're trying to rock that tradition uh, in a form of this, man, it's not going to look good at all. And uh, it, it really rocks the core of that original audience. And you're really going to drive you know, sales and shares down into losses. And it's really going to show once the next quarterly comes. And uh, you will see. Watch. I bet anything, when you see the next quarterly report, it's going to be down unless they do something about this now. All right. But right, we'll see in time. Uh, yeah, so that's the latest in crypto news. Tune in for more uh, news and updates and, you know, in terms of what I do. Because I do a lot of news. I talk about a lot of platforms. I talk about a lot of opportunities. Uh, this is just a piece that I do, and this is all part of this whole entertainment package that I have to offer, podcast, uh, Telegram chat, everything else that comes with it. So 
Other than that, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.